As I was preparing to sing, my friend and my hero, Mr. Rupert Twink Starr, in his World War II uniform, let me repeat that, World War II uniform, nearly a hundred handed me this glorious and beautiful flag, which you defended. Thank you. And I wanted today to be a, a dedication to you and Lola, who at 98 and you at almost 100 at 99 right now, served our nation lovingly and powerfully well, Wink. Thank you. But this is a Memorial Day that has grabbed all of our attention in a different way. And so I ask your permission to lift up the children. So thank you. And God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. Would you join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Late at night, when everything is calm, Anna Rodriguez looks at smiling pictures of her daughter, Mady, Yelena, Rodriguez. It is the only time she has been able to grieve in the chaos of the massacre's aftermath. Anna says, I cry and I think of her. Mady was the only girl in her family and was happy all her life. Her mother said if there was a picture of loving, it would be a picture of her. Mady was focused, ambitious, and determined, her mother said. Since kindergarten, Mady had dreamed of becoming a marine biologist. One day, she surprised Ms. Rodriguez by announcing that she wanted to go to Texas A&M University Corpus Christi after overhearing someone talking about the marine biology program there. Ms. Rodriguez said she had hoped to take Mady to Corpus Christi and show her the school. We never got to go. That opportunity never came. I want the world to know she was my absolute best friend, Ms. Rodriguez said. We did everything together. She was charismatic, loving, ambitious, competitive. She was self-driven, focused. She was a fighter. She was my best friend. She was my sweet girl. Mady was one of 21 people, 19 students and two teachers who were killed by an 18-year-old gunman on Tuesday, May 20th, at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. The other students, of the other students, two were nine years old, 16 were 10, one was 11, and the two teachers as well. Tess Mata was very joyful, her sister Faith said. She remembered her little sister, 11 years younger, three days ago when she stood in front of their home in Uvalde, sometimes holding to the present tense to describe her sister, who died after a gunman stormed into her class. She said she was sassy. She loved dancing. She loves getting dressed up with her hair done. She's just a ball of joy. I don't think she ever came in contact with someone that she did, they didn't leave feeling that they were happier with a smile on their face. Tess had a cat named Oliver, and she planned to be a veterinarian, but Faith thought her younger sister was perhaps better suited to be a teacher. She said she was an excellent student and she loved going to school and being with her friends. She loved her two teachers. The sisters often watched old Disney movies together, but much of their time was spent on a softball field where Tess became a second base standout under the tutelage of her older sister. But she said, that little girl taught herself to pitch by watching YouTube videos, and she would have been an amazing pitcher. Aletha Ramirez wanted to be an artist, and she wanted to have her work displayed in a gallery. At a vigil for the victims on Wednesday, Aletha's heartbroken mother, Jessica Hernandez, showed her daughter's artwork and cards that she had made for her birthday last year. Her mom said, 
She was so bright, smart, and talented. She wanted to be an artist. She was always drawing ever since she was four years old. She wanted to show her art and show how talented she was. Jessica read the card that Alethea had made and given her for her birthday last year. Dear Mom, you have always been there for me no matter what you made me feel loved, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate all that you have done for me. You are truly a wonderful mother. You are special. Have a wonderful birthday. Through her tears, her mom said, I do not want this to happen again. I do not want this to happen to other families. I just don't. When, when Miranda Gale Mathis started school, she was shy and quiet. And her mother, Dina, said that as the year went on, she opened up and made friends. She was a creative girl who loved music, mermaids, and unicorns. She was encouraged by her mother and her aunts. She and her younger brother were always together and loved to play Roblox on her tablet. But Miranda loved the outdoors as well. She enjoyed running during school field days, swimming in the river, showing rocks that she found to her mom. The one thing I know she loved was her whole family, her mother said. She loved each and every one of us. Nevea Alyssa Brava was a princess in the eyes of her family. As her cousins wrote on Facebook, they added, she is flying with the angels above. We love you, Nevea. Then they finished, please, everyone, continue to keep her parents and our family in your prayers. McKenna Lee Elrod was beautiful. She was funny. She was smart and amazing. She had the biggest heart, and she loved her family and friends so much. Her smile would light up the room. Words cannot express the pain my sister and our family are going through, her Aunt Allison wrote. I know in the coming weeks my sister is going to be overcome with so much and any support is appreciate, appreciated. Excuse me. Please pray for our family and remember McKenna. We will carry her in our hearts, and we know she is with our Lord and Savior. Alexandria Anaya Rubio, known as Lexi, was an honor student at Robb Elementary School who loved TikTok, dreamed of being a lawyer, and was the student every teacher wants, said her mother. On Tuesday morning, Lexi, a fourth grader, had just received a Good Citizenship Award and Honor Roll Award for getting all A's. Later that day, all the family's joy was ripped away. We talked about women's rights, and she was a budding feminist, said Ms. Rubio, 33, as her voice was breaking. Lexi's parents said they had waited until the last possible moment to name her deciding on something that would stand out when her name was called at her high school graduation. She was my baby, said Kimberly. I don't want anybody else to go through this. Yalia Sogario was the youngest of four children, the baby of her family, her father said. She loved going to school and seeing her friends, and she told her father, Jacob, on Monday night that she really didn't feel well and she didn't want to go to school on Tuesday. It was uncharacteristic of her, he said, but by morning, she seemed to have forgotten all about that. She got up, she got dressed, she went to school as usual. I can't believe this happened to my daughter, my baby girl, he added. It's always been a fear of mine to lose a child. He and the family were getting ready to go to a funeral home on Wednesday having spent hours and hours the day before at the Civic Center waiting for information about her officials, finally came and got a DNA sample using a swab. I figured out that a DNA swab test was something really bad, he said. About an hour later, they called to confirm she had passed. Her siblings are taking it hard, he went on. They just want their sister back. J.C. Carmelo Lovanos was Yelia's cousin. J.C. died in the same classroom as his cousin. J.C.'s aunt wrote on Facebook, still can't believe that we're never going to see you again. Jackie Cesares and Annabelle Rodriguez were also cousins in the same classroom at Robb Elementary School. Jackie just had her first communion two weeks ago and was very social, said Polly Flores, who is Jackie's aunt and Annabelle's great aunt. She was outgoing. She was always 
at the center of attention, Mrs. Flores said. She was my little diva. Whereas her cousin, Annabelle, was an honor roll student and was very quiet, but she and her cousin were very close. They were so close that Annabelle's twin sister, who was homeschooled, was always jealous of the two of them. She said, we're a very tight family. This is devastating. A Mary Jo Garza was a friendly 10-year-old who just loved playing Play-Doh. A Mary Jo was full of life, a jokester, always smiling, said her father, Alfred. She did not talk a lot about school, but liked spending time there with her friends at lunch and on the playground and at recess. She was very social. She talked to everybody. A Mary Jo's extended family had gathered in the room where the Texas Rangers broke the horrible news late Tuesday. The family's loss came after losing several loved family members to COVID-19 over the past two years. We're finally getting a break, we thought. Nobody was passing away. Mr. Garza said, and then this happened. He had gone to the school earlier in the day, and there was total chaos. At first, he said, I did not think that anyone had been hurt. Then he heard that children had died. For hours, he waited word about his daughter, and then he said, I was in shock when the Texas Rangers shared the news. When he got home, he went through her pictures. It's then that I had a release. He said, I started crying, started mourning, and I haven't stopped. Jose Flores had a pink t-shirt that said, tough guys wear pink. His grandfather, George Rodriguez, called him my little Josito and kept a photograph of the boy in his wallet. Mr. Rodriguez, who also lost a niece in Tuesday's shooting, attended counseling at the Civic Center in town, but said it didn't offer any reprieve for his pain. They were beautiful. They were innocent children. Javier Lopez, made the honor roll for the first time on the day he was killed. He was eager to come home and share this news with his three brothers, but his grandparents said he decided instead to stay at school to watch a movie and eat popcorn with his classmates. They remembered Javier as an exuberant baseball and soccer player who had a girlfriend at school with whom he chatted on the phone all the time. Leonard Sandoval, 54, Xavier's grandfather, stood outside the family home on Wednesday trying to make sense of the incomprehensible. He said, why? Why him? Why the kids? Manny Remfro said of his 10-year-old grandson, Uzziah Garcia, he was a special, special boy. He loved video games, football, and he brought joy to everyone in the family. I stand in grief, he said in a brief interview. I don't sleep, I don't eat. When their family was notified by the authorities on Tuesday, Uzziah was among the victims, and when they found this out, his mother cried and cried. Mr. Remfo said, I wept. Manny was just a typical kid. Eliana Ellie Garcia was just a few days short of turning 10, her father Stephen said. He had been looking forward to being the DJ at her birthday party this summer, and adding, this, he said, she was a doll. She was the happiest ever. Two days after his daughter was killed, Mr. Garcia said he was too deep in grief to share any memories, but he wanted to thank everyone for their prayers. We miss her, he said. Please tr try and stay by our sides. Amore. Eudelia Orta, 30, confirmed that her nephew, Ro Rogelio Torres, died in the shooting. We're still trying to understand it, she said. We don't know what to do. Her nephew was the second oldest of four children. And he always helped out his siblings. He was a loving person, she said. He loved his siblings. Eliana Torres was determined to get a hit in softball. She was so proud to be on the team for the first time, but wanted to stop striking out. So her grandfather hung a ball outside the family home, and Eliana would work on her swing after practice over and over and over. One more, she would say, as her family told her to come in for bed, just one more. Her family said she was a steadfast, incandescent presence in the home that she shared with her grandparents, her mother, and her aunt. She loved to scare her aunt, Laura, by springing out from behind the door and shouting, boo. She danced around in front of her phone and belted out Taylor Swift's You Belong With Me. She was my love, her grandfather, Victor, said. She was one of a kind. 
After, Mrs. Cabrales had heart, after Mr. Cabrales had heart surgery a few years ago, Eliana accompanied him on his doctor-prescribed walks, helping him to scoop up pecans that fell from the trees in the neighborhood around Robb Elementary School. She made sure her grandparents took their medications. On hot days, she would pour a glass of water, ice water, to be waiting for her grandfather when he came home from work. The family jokingly called her Enfermer, Enfermerita, our little nurse. Sorry for saying that badly. Eliana loved her cat and goldfish and cherished a trip to the lone Starbucks in U Uvalde. As summer approached, her aunt said that she was announcing to everyone she would probably cry on the last day of school because she'd miss her friends so much. Leila Salazar was an energetic girl who had won three first place ribbons for athletics at school and was already planning summer sleepovers with her friends at her grandparents' house. Her grandfather, Vincent, said, my granddaughter was one that loved everything about life, and they took it all away from her. Mr. Salazar said in an interview in front of his home on Thursday, they took her away from us. How do you mend a broken heart from a family as close as we are? Relatives from across the country had come to Uvalde to be with the family as they grieved. Mr. Salazar said filling the home after such a loss of a little girl whose absence could be felt so strongly was impossible. Layla, to our family, was the heart of our life. When asked his name by a reporter, Mr. Salazar paused. I was grandpa. I was Layla Salazar's grandpa. That is what she called me, grandpa. Eva Morales, 44, loved teaching the children at Robb Elementary School most recently in fourth grade, and neighbors described her as a good-natured person who was usually smiling. She brought the neighborhood together, and one of her next-door neighbors said she loved all the children. A cousin by marriage, Joe Castillo, 40, who lives down the block, said that outside of work, Miss Morales liked to run marathons. She was very athletic. We were always hanging out together at barbecues and family gatherings. She was a wonderful person. They had planned to be together over Memorial Day weekend. And his mother, Esperanza, rushed to the home of his children to console her grandchildren who knew Eva well. They are taking it really hard. She was the kind of teacher everybody loves. Audrey Garcia, who's the mother of a young woman with Down syndrome named Gabby, recalls that this teacher was a transformational teacher in her child's life. Gabby, now 23, has a high school diploma under her belt, largely because Eva dedicated her life in third grade and beyond to make sure she made it. It was in that year that Uvalde first integrated children with mental disabilities into regular classrooms. It was new for the teachers in that area, said Mrs. Garcia, and she threw herself into the work she gave everything she had, learning every teaching method she could to help Gabby reach her highest potential. She never saw the potential as lower than anyone else's in the classroom. And Irma Garcia was a teacher for more than two decades. She was known as a steadfast optimist in her family. She would crack jokes at gatherings in Uvalde. She would sing her classic rock tunes during parties and help her nephew, John Martinez, with his homework. John's now a student at Texas State University, and he says of his aunt, she's always been optimistic about everything and just so loving with all people in her life. On Tuesday, he and his family had gathered to process the news from the authorities. Ms. Garcia had been killed at Robb Elementary, surrounding her students. They found her body there, embracing children in her arms until her very last breath. She had treated her students as if they were her children. He said, it had been easy for her to love others because she loved everyone. She pictured, picture her putting herself on the line. That's who she was. He referred to her as Tia, his aunt in Spanish, and he said she was like a second mom. She brought joy and light to every room she entered. Irma's husband of 24 years, Joe Garcia, died two days after the shooting. He had gone to the memorial on Thursday morning to drop off flowers. 
Ruptured by the grief of losing the love of his life, his heart broke in two, and he died of a massive heart attack at the kitchen table that morning when he returned. Irma and Joe leave four children behind, ranging, ranging from 22 to 13 years old. Maddie and Jackie, Ellie, Nevea, McKenna, Jose, Uzziah, Amari Joe, Xavier, JC, Tess, Alethea, Annabelle, Lexi, Layla, Jayla, Eliana, Rojillo, and Miranda were our children. Eva and Irma were our teachers. Joe was our neighbor. Their families are our family. Their neighbors are our neighbors. This country is our country. So how will we remember them? How will we grieve this time? How will we respond this time? How will we be different in the aftermath of this massacre? How will we change because they were here? In a poem written 48 hours after the massacre, our young poet laureate Amanda Gorman wrote, Him for the Hurting. Everything hurts. Our hearts shadowed and strange, minds made muddied and mute. We carry tragedy, terrifying and true, and yet none of it is new. We knew it as home, as horror, as heritage. Even our children cannot be children, cannot be. Everything hurts. It's a hard time to be alive and even harder to stay that way. We're burdened to live out these days while at the same time blessed to outlive them. This alarm is how we know we must be altered, that we must differ or die, that we must triumph or try. Thus, while hate cannot be terminated, it can be transformed into a love that lets us live. May we not just grieve, but give. May we not just ache, but act. May our signed right to bear arms never blind our sight from shared harm. May we choose our children over chaos. May another innocent never be lost. Maybe everything hurts, our hearts shadowed and strange, but only when everything hurts may everything change.